We are here with Congressman Dennis Ross from the great state of Florida. And um, he is one of the wonderful people that we elected pretty recently to come up here and uh, shake the cobwebs out and shake things up. So, uh, Congressman, I, how, how are you enjoying your experiences in Congress so far? Uh, I'm enjoying the challenge. And believe me, it's quite a challenge. It's a, it's a different uh, a way of life. We've, we've, we've learned that a lot of the... Um, the people that have been here, part of what we call the establishment, don't appreciate, I think, the fact that, that us new people uh, don't understand how Washington works. And, and, and my response to them is, is that any organization such as this that has run four years of deficits and trillions of dollars doesn't work. And, and so it's a, it's a challenge making the change to, to try to show how Washington can work. And that has been a daily battle. Uh, and it's moved slow. This is a very slow moving process. Um, but I, I think we're seeing some very positive signs on the horizon. Yeah, um, you know, speaking of, you know, you talk about the spending and the debt and issues like that, um, you and I had had a conversation a couple months back on Twitter about one of your first bills that you right. put forward on zero-based budgeting. Could you explain what that is and why you support that idea? Sure. Right now, federal government does what's called baseline budgeting. budgeting. They look at last year's budget for each agency or department, and then they say, okay, what do you need in addition to that for the next year? And they keep building almost after several years it becomes an exponential multiplier on the, the budget. What I'm asking for under this bill is that we start with a baseline of zero. That zero-based budgeting is the way we go about funding our, our agencies and our departments. Then the agency will not only have to show what appropriation or amount of money they want, but they also have to show the authority that allows them to spend that money. Uh, in addition to that, then they have to submit three amounts uh, for their full budget, two of which have to be less than the year before. Uh, the the, the zero-based budgeting is, is something that's even been recommended by the President's Debt Commission. It's something that I think that all businesses, all households do. It would be nice to see government do it. Uh, unfortunately, it's been slow to catch any, uh, uh, any support. We have a few co-sponsors right now, but uh, uh, I think a lot of people are concerned because what it eventually will do is to really show these agencies uh, that some of what they spend, if not a lot of what they spend, is not justifiable or necessary. Yeah, I know. I get frustrated when you hear about, you know, Congress is going to make cuts, but it's really a reduction in how much more they're spending. It's not an actual cut. So this is one idea I think that would add a lot of transparency. No question about it. But let me also tell you something else that's very frustrating. Um, for example, I just had a bill that came uh, up yesterday in committee, and it was a pension reduction bill. It reduced the amount that the federal government pays towards federal employees and congressional pensions and, re and reduces congressional pensions so they're on parity with federal employees. It allowed for $1.7 billion of annual savings to the federal government. My argument has been let's take that $1.7 billion that we're now going to save and put it towards deficit reduction. Unfortunately, now my leadership's looking at say, to say, no, let's use that $1.7 billion and put it in this transportation package over here so we help pay for something else. So all of a sudden, the cut here has become an expenditure here. When the big picture is, the American people want to see us reduce our spending. They want to see us reduce our debt. Yeah, I know um, when your freshman class came in, there was, I think, a discussion of we're going to commit to, what was it, $100 billion in cuts, and then it ended up being an entirely different number, and some of that was accounting tricks. Right. Um, where do you think that got off track? Well, the, the, the interpretation of it. And, and I'll tell you what the interpretation was. The interpretation was by leadership is that, well, that $100 billion uh, was really for the whole year of, of 2011. And since we didn't actually get into the 2011 budget until March uh, by way of the CR that we passed, that we only had to, to, to reduce it by $32 billion, which in fact turned out to be like $300 million in cuts for the year. And that's just not fair to the American public. The other thing that's not fair to the American public is that we can't bind future Congresses. So we can say that we've reduced the federal deficit by $1.2 trillion over the next 10 years, but no, we've only reduced it by what we have the authority of reducing by December 31st of 2012. The next Congress, the 113th Congress, can ignore what we've done in cuts and can spend and spend and spend. And until we get a balanced budget amendment that forces Congress to operate within its financial means, we're never going to be able to reduce the true exposure that we seem to get ourselves in every congressional session. Yeah, I, I agree with you on the need for the balanced budget amendment. Um, if you could ask people that are watching this to write their congressional representatives and support something, what, what specifically would you like them to encourage their representatives to sign on to? Uh, the, my zero-based budgeting bill. Which, what's the bill number on that? Man, I'll have 
have to get that for you. Okay, I'll, I'll link it. I'll link it when I get it. No problem. Thank you. Uh, a balanced budget amendment, a bill, uh, and and uh, fiscal responsibility. That, 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 that we have campaigned on this. We have pounded the table on this. You know, where else but Washington D.C. is a reduction in spending? And, you know, considered a, a savings uh, when in fact all it's doing is, is just reducing the amount we've already been spending. We need to go back to justify everything that we're doing. We have shown through um, uh, the Office of Personnel Management uh, that we've got over, you know, 20% of our programs are duplication. If we could save 20% of our budget just by downsizing those programs and agencies that are duplicative, we would save so much money. You know, we, we, we seem to miss the mark. We love to campaign on fiscal responsibility, but we don't seem to legislate uh, with that mantra. And, and we've got to hold our elected representatives' feet to the fire to make sure that they actually vote that way. Okay, great. Is there um, anything else that you're working on that you'd like to let people know about? Uh, one of the things that I am working on as chairman of the subcommittee on the Federal Workforce in the United States Postal Service, we will do a postal reform bill that has been out there. The post office is going to um, run out of money, essentially, by this summer. They showed uh, at least a $5 billion loss last year. It was actually a little over $10 billion because they didn't meet all their obligations and some of that's been postponed. We've got to reform the post office. We're not talking about privatizing, we're talking about reforming it. The Postal Service has over 80% of its cost is labor. And those union contracts offer for no layoff clauses, so we don't get rid of anybody. More importantly, is 20% of their revenues have declined because of the lack of first class mail over the last six years. We've got to bring it under control so that it is self-sustaining, and that'll be a reform bill that'll probably hit the floor come March or April. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Thanks, Amy.